Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. In this video, we'll have our third lesson on ratios and proportions. We'll do problems on ratios and proportions. This is, as I said, third video in the series of six. In the first video, we did 10 problems, 1 through 10. In the second one, we did 11 through 20. And right now, we're going to do only five problems, not 10, 21 through 25. Let's get going, shall we? The first problem, as you can see, it's already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It says, A and B, working together, can do a job in 15 days. And of course, you understand that in a real exam, they're going to be a little bit more elaborate. They're going to, they're going to make sure they cover all the bases. They, 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 they want to make sure that they cover their derriere. Do you understand? So this is how it's going to say, this is how it's going to say in the exam. It's going to say, A and B, working together at their respective constant paces. At their respective constant paces, which I left out here because I'm lazy. Can do a job in 15 days. They have to work at their constant pace all the time throughout the entire story. We are further told that A can do a fifth of a job in five days working by himself. Question simply is how long will B take to do the job by himself if we were to ask B to do the job all by himself. Let's find out, shall we? So let's begin with what we know. We know that, here is the solution, so we know, we know that A can do, we are told, A can do the job, a fifth of the job, A can do a fifth in, A can do fifth in, five days. Now what we are interested in, what we are interested in is not what A can do in five days, what we are interested in is what is A able to achieve and of course if you want to do this problem yourself before I get going on this thing, as always as soon as I set up one problem on the blackboard, pause the video, do it yourself first if that's what you are interested in, you will learn more that way. So pause the video right now and do it yourself if you want to. So what I was saying is that what we are interested in is not what A can do in five days, what we are interested in is well, how much work can A do when they are working together, 15 days. So if A can do one fifth of a job in five days, then if you were to multiply that by three, what will end up here is 15 days. Since we multiply this side of the equation in, uh, by three, we have to multiply this side. And of course, I use the word equation because that's what it is. It has to balance. Whatever I do to this part, we have to do this part. Instead of five days, if you were to give him 10 days, if you were to multiply this by two, you will, he will do two fifths of a job. You will have to multiply this quantity by two. Whatever we do here, we have to do here. So there we go. So now we know that A can do three-fifths of a job. A can do three-fifths of a job in 15 days. When they are working together, they tell us how long they take. But A is doing three-fifths of a job in 15 days, then that in turn implies that B must do, must do two-fifths of a job in 15 days. B must do two-fifths of a job in 15 days. Again, we're not interested, we're not interested in how much work he can do in, uh, how much uh, how much job he can do in 15 days. We want to know how long it takes him to do the whole job. So let's convert this to a whole thing. So again, divide both sides by two if you guys, if you like. I'm, 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 I'm spelling it out. I shouldn't have to do it like this, but divide both by two. And now we know that if he can do two-fifths of a job in 15 days, he should be able to do one-fifth of a job in 15 over two days or seven and a half days. This works out to be seven and a half days. So we know now that B does B does a fifth of a job. See, there's one over five. B does a fifth of a job in 15 over two, which is seven and a half days. Seven and a half days. We're not interested in fifth of a job. We want to find out how long it takes him to do the whole job. So multiply it by five and make it a whole. Multiply this by five, so that five cancels out. And multiply this by five. And we're done. That's it. That's our answer. The answer simply is 5 times 7 and a half. 5 times 7 and a half. We know 5 times 7 is 35. And we know 5 halves are 2 and a half. There we go. 5 halves are 2 and a half. How do we know 5 halves are 2 and a half? Because 2 halves are 1. 4 halves are 2. You see? That's what we're saying here. We're saying 4 halves are 2. Five halves are two and a half. So two and a half plus thirty-five is answer is thirty-seven and a half days he will take to do the job all by himself. Thirty-seven and a half job. Let's do one more. Let's do one more problem, very similar to this one, which is why I call this twenty-one A. Let's do twenty-one B, very similar to it, and this time you do it yourself. 
Okay, I'm going to set it up and you're going to do it yourself. So we have A and B, they can do the entire job, we are told, not in 15 days, but we are told that they can do a job in 24 days. They can do a job in 24 days. We have further told that A can do the tenth of a job, not a fifth. Tenth of a job in four days. In four days. Question is, how long will B take to do the job by himself? Do it yourself, pause the video and do it yourself. Shall we? Shall, shall, shall we? So here we go, same exact setup as before. We know A can do, we are told, tenth of a job. So instead of a fifth, we have a tenth. He can do tenth of a job instead of a... He can do tenth of a job, we are told, in four days. In four days. We're not interested in knowing how much he can do in four days. We want to know how much job, how much work he's doing when they're working together for 24 days. Not four days, we want to know how much he can do when they're working together for 24 days. Well, if he can do this much job, if he can do this much work in four days, then 24 days is six times as much. So multiply this by six, so we get 24 here. Since we multiply that side by three, six, we have to multiply this side by six. So now we know that A can do six tenth of a job in 24 days. That implies, that in turn implies that B must do the remaining job. If he's doing six tenth, he got, this guy must do four tenth. In how much time? In, in 24 days. In 24 days. And of course the rest is very simple. If B does four tenth in 24, he does four tenth of a job in 24 days. So multiply both sides by 10. He must be able to do, he should be able to do exactly four jobs in 24 times 10, 240 days. But leave it like this. If he can do four jobs in this many days, that in turn implies that he should be able to do one job, one job in 24 times 10 over 4. Because you divide both sides by 4 there, and he should be able to do one job in 24 times 10 divided by 4. 4 is going to cancel out with 24 by 6, and the answer is he should be able to do the entire job all by himself if he is given 60 days. Let's do number 22, shall we? Number 22. Again, as soon as I set it up, pause the video and do it yourself without my having to remind you every time because I don't remember every time to remind you. Do you understand? Here's the next one, number 22. Ratio of A to B, we are told, is 3 to 5. We are also told that the ratio of, ratio of C to B is 7 to 10. 7 to 10. 7 to 10. The question is, what is the ratio of A to C? Let's find out, shall we? So what do we know? We know that A to B, we know is 3 fifths. A to B, we know is 3 fifths. We further know, we are further told that C to B, keep in mind, pay attention, it's C to B, not B to C. C to B, we are told, is 7 to 10. And the question is, what's the ratio of A to C? A to C. So if you take AB here, if you take this ratio that we know AB and multiply by this ratio that we know C to B, that's not going to get us anywhere. That's not going to get us anywhere. That's going to end up, you're going to end up with A times C over B squared. That's not what we want. We want to get rid of this. The question is, what's the ratio of A to C? We want to get rid of this B. We want to get rid of this B and this B. So instead of multiplying, we're going to divide. We're going to divide. When we divide, what we end up is A over B. Division sign, since we're dividing it, so now we can convert it into a multiplication. If you convert this division into multiplication, then C over B is going to become B over C. You can write the reciprocal of it. And the rest is downhill. B is, are going, as you see, can, are going to cancel out. And we'll end up with A over A over C. We're going to end up with A over C, which is exactly what we want. We're going to end up with A over C, which is exactly what we want. So that's what we have to do here. That's exactly what we have to do here. So we can continue here. Or we can continue here. 
we can, we can continue right here, A over B, which is 3 fifths, 3 fifths times B over C. Keep in mind, B over C. It's not C over C, it's B over C. B over C is going to be 10 over 7. 10 over 7, and we are done. Divide top and bottom by 5, 10 is going to become 2, 5 is going to drop out, 2 times 3 is 6. The answer is 6, 7. The answer is 6, 7. That's it, that's your answer. Now, as you can see, this method that we just did, this approach that we just did, uh, that, that we just used, it's a very classical, very traditional, very academic, very geeky, very nerdy, very mathematical approach. There is a quick and dirty way. Let's take a look at quick and dirty way, shall we? Without having to set up all this mumbo jumbo, there is a quick and dirty way. Here's how it goes. We have three people, A, B and C. Let's, let's do it right here. I'm going to write this C over B a little bit in size so we have more room. So we know C over B is C over B is C over B is 7 over 10. So we have three we have three actors here. We have three actors A to B to C. What would happen? Okay? Watch what happens and pay close attention. So let's start with what we know. A to B is 3 to 5. 3 to 5. And C to B, always keep in mind that it is C to B, not, not B to C. C to B, you have to pay attention. That's where the, uh, that's where it pays to pay, uh, that's, that's where it pays to concentrate. I was going to say that's where it pays to pay attention, but that was a silly sentence. That's where it pays to concentrate, you understand? It is C over B. So C over B is 7 to 10. So it's going to be 7 C to B. You with me? I'm or perhaps explaining too much, but look, we are done. Think of these. Think of these as boys and girls, uh, red marbles and blue marbles, red cars and blue cars. Think of these as objects, people, something like that. And what we're saying is that if the first half of the, if the, first half of the story we have five, five blue marbles, the second half of the story we cannot all of a sudden have ten blue marbles. The numbers have to be consistent. Whatever come, appears as a common factor, a common, common factor, think of this as a common factor if you like, whatever appears as a common element, it has to be consistent. If the first half of the story says Bs, there are only five Bs. Second half of the story, we cannot all of a sudden have ten. We have to convert this into ten. They have to be consistent. Either convert this into ten or divide this by two. But we're not going to divide this by two. Let's multiply this by two. So now it becomes ten. Now they are consistent. But it is no longer three to five. If you're going to multiply this side by two, we must multiply this side by two. So now the ratio is still three to five. Ratio of A to B is still three to five. We are done. A. How many A's do we have? We have 2 times 3, we have 6 A's. How many B's do we have? We have 10 B's. How many C's do we have? We have 7 C's, right here, 7 C's. And the question was, what's the ratio of A to C? Well, A to C is 6 over 7, right here. A to C is 6 over 7. So that was another way of doing it, instead of doing all this academic way. Do you understand? Let's do one more, shall we? 23. 23. I don't know why I use red markers. Red, red marker is not very easy to erase. 23. We are told that we are told if x plus y is 30% of 5x and if and if the ratio of x to z is 1 to 5, what is the ratio? What's the ratio of y to z? What's the ratio of y to z given the fact that the sum of x and y happens to be exactly 30% of 5 times x and ratio of x to z we are told is 1 to 5. Do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. Pause the video immediately without my having to say it every time as I told you before. Do it yourself. So here we go. So here's our first equation. We know x plus y. x plus y is means equal 30, 30, there is your 30 percent means over 100, of means times, and here is our 5x. 
There is our 5x. So let's get going, see what we can do here. Divide, divide top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, the zeros are going to drop out. And then divide top and bottom by 5. 5 is going to drop out and 10 is going to become 2. And now let's cross multiply. So we have, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. So we can end up with, so that we can get rid of this 2 here. We can bring this 2 over here. So it's going to be 2 times x plus y equals 3 times x, which is 3x. So we have 2x plus 2y equals 3x. Bring the 2x to this side. In other words, subtract 2x from both sides. 2x are going to drop out. And we're going to end up with x equals to x, 3x minus 2x is x equals to 2y. Which means that x over y, x over y, if you divide both sides by y, is going to be 2 over 1. So there you go. That's x over y is 2 over 1. What else do we know? We also know that x over z, so let's make, let, let's make a note here. So, so when we approach, when we get to this point, we can continue in a classical way, or we can do the quick and dirty way if you like. I will do both ways, just, just to show you what to do here. So we can continue in the classical way, so we know x over y, let's rewrite it, is 2 over 1. We also know that x over z, x over z is 1 over 5. And I'm, I'm writing this thing next to each other for a reason here. We want y over z, y over z. As you can see, if we were to multiply both x over y times x over z, that's not going to get us anywhere. We end up, we're going to end up with y squared over x, x times z. That's not what we want. We want to get rid of this x. So instead of multiplying, we're going to divide the two. We're going to divide the two. So now we end up with x over y, and then when we convert this division to multiplication, it's going to be times y over x. Ah, but here we have to pay very close attention because what we're going to end up is z over y. We're looking for y over z. So at the end, we're going to have to take the reciprocal of the final answer. Remember that. x is going to cancel out and we have our answer. So let's do that. x over y, x over y, x to x to y is 2 to 1 times, times z over x z over x. It's not x over z. It's not x to z. We want z over x. This is going to be 5 to 1. Oh, this can't be. Is it? I guess that's it. So it's 10 to 1. 10 to 1. What does 10 to 1 represent? 10 to 1 represents... 10 to 1 represents... This is where you have to pay attention. 10 to 1 represents z over y. This represents z over y. We're not interested in z over y. The question is, what is the ratio of y to z? Ratio of z to y is 10 over 10 to 1. So ratio of y to z is going to be 1 to 10. 1 to 10. That's our answer. That's our final answer. The answer is 1 to 10. And since since you're preparing for one of these standardized exams, whether you're preparing for GRE or GMAT or TEAS or HESES or SAT or SCT, these are all standardized exams. All of these exams are in the form of multiple choice questions. You have to be very careful because one of the answer choices is going to say 10 to 1. And one of the answer choices is going to say 1 to 10. This is where, you, this is where it pays to concentrate and always be fully cognizant of what is being asked. You must always be fully aware at all time as to what is being asked. Are they looking for y to z or z to y? Here they're looking for y to z. What we have here is z to y. So it's not 10 to 1, it is 1 to 10. What I'm going to do right now is, I'm, so this is one method. This is, as I said, this is same as before, the traditional method. Let's do the non-traditional method. Now in the non-traditional method, you do have to do this work. This amount of work that we did there, we have to have this. x over y is 2 to 1, and we know that x to z is 1 to 5. We have to know that part. So this part we do have to know. We have to know, we have to know this part, and we have to know this part. If we know these two ratios, and then we can approach, we can approach it in the following manner. So instead of doing all of this from that point on, we can approach in the following manner. So we have x to y, to z. We know x to y is 2 to 1. 2 to 1. Watch what happens. We also know that x to z is 1 to 5. x to z is 1 to 5. 1, 2, 5. x to z. As you can clearly see, here we have two x's, here we have one x's. First, first, half, of this, first half of the story says we have two x marbles. Here it says we have one x marble. Think of this as a color. They cannot have different quantities. They have to be the same quantities throughout the entire story quantities of x cannot change all of a sudden. How do we convert this 1 into 2? Simple. Very simple. Multiply it by 2. And since you multiply this by 2, you must multiply that by 2. 
And there's your answer. The question is, what's the ratio was? What was it, what were they looking for? What was the ratio of y to z? I think they were looking for y to z. Y, there you go, y to z. y is 1 and z is 10. The ratio is 1 to 10. There you go, there's your y to z. y to z is 1 to 10. So not only this one is a little faster, but you also don't have to remember to take the reciprocal at the end. What number was this? This was 23. Let's do one more. Well, not one more. Let's do next one. We're going to do two more. 24 and 25. Why don't you do the next one yourself? I'm going to set it up and do it yourself then. Once you master the elementary problems like this, where they just give you A to B to C or X to Y to Z or P to Q to R, then we are ready down the road when we do the next, next three videos, four, five, and six in the series, you'll be ready to do a fairly complicated word problem which appears as a ratio problem or proportion problems. And those, appear, those, those will appear as hard questions. These are easy and medium questions. Here's the next one. If the ratio, this is 24. If the ratio of blue marbles to red marbles is 5 to 7 and if the ratio of blue marbles to green marbles is 3 to 5 what is the ratio of red to green red to green one more time I'm going to read it to you slowly in the event that you have trouble with my handwriting it says if the ratio of blue marbles to red marbles is 5 to 7 and if the ratio of blue marbles it doesn't say that it should say and if the ratio of and if the ratio of blue marbles to green marbles is 3 to 5 what is the ratio red to green do it yourself I will even give you the answer choices if you like. The answer choices are as follows. A, B, C, D, and E. 3 to 7, 7 to 3, 15 to 35, 21 to 25, or 25 to 35. One more time, 3 to 7, 7 to 3, 15 to 35, 21 to 25, and 25 to 35. As you can see, these are increasing numbers, first number there. So here we go. So we know the ratio of blue marbles to red marbles. Blue marbles to red marbles is 5 to 7. We also know that the ratio of blue marbles to green marbles. Blue marbles to green marbles, we are told, is 3 to 5. The question is, what is the ratio of red to green? Red to green again as you can see red and green they both appear at the bottom so multiplying this quantity by that quantity is not going to get us anywhere we have to divide so we have to take blue marble to red marbles and divide that by blue marbles to green marbles and since we are dividing we're going to have to take the reverse take the reciprocal of this guy and become green to blue and that's how we're going to get rid of the blue and we're going to end up green to red which is exactly what oh we need red to green so again we're going to have to remember it this is red to green what we're going to end up here is green to red, so at the end we're going to have to remember to take the reciprocal of the final answer, which is why we have things like this, 3 to 7 and 7 to 3 and so forth, they're just playing with you. So let's see what happens, shall we? Blue to red, blue to red, right here, blue to red is 5 to 7. 5 to 7. So there are, there are a couple of things here you have to remember in a traditional approach, and it's very easy to forget, very easy to mess up. This is another thing you have to remember, that it is blue to green, when we multiply it becomes green to blue, so when we go here, we can't say 3 to 5, green to blue is what we're looking for, green to blue, which is 5 to 3. So this is what you have to worry about in a traditional approach. In the non-traditional approach that I showed you, the quick method, you don't have to worry about any of that. I'll show you in a second again with that method. So green to blue, green to blue is going to be 5 to 3. 5 to 3, and we're done, that's it. 5 times 5 is 25 to 21. 25 to 21, again. As you can see, lucky for us, lucky for us, it's a sheer luck 
that I was about to pick 25 to 21, I even though I told you yours, myself, I reminded you to myself, for you to remember that at the end what we're going to end up is green to red. This is green to red. And I told you at the end we're going to have to take a reciprocal of it. It's a good thing that 25 to 21 is not there because I was about to look for that answer. It's not there. And the all of a sudden I remember that we have to take the reciprocal of it. Had they given 20, 21 to 25 and 25 to 21, I probably would have picked E by, by mistake just now. It's very easy to forget. So this is green to red. We're not interested in green to red. We are looking for red to green. So red to green is going to be 21 to 25. The answer is D. The answer is D. Now let's do the non-traditional approach, shall we? Let's do the non-traditional approach on the top. And see what happens. And we'll see how long it takes. Okay, we'll see what happens and we'll see how long it takes. So we have three things. We have blue, red, and green. Blue, red, and green. We know, what was it? I forget now if I erased this thing by, by mistake. In this button clip, 5 to 7. Yeah, 5 to 7 right here. 5 to 7. So we know blue to red is 5 to 7. We also know that blue to green, blue to green, blue to green, blue to green is 3 to 5. Watch what happens now. I'm going to change the color one more time. Okay. It only takes a few seconds to do it this way. Again, here we have five blue marbles. Here we have three blue marbles. There you can't have that. We have to have, we have same number of blue marbles. And the way we're going to do the same number of blue marbles is by multiplying this quantity by three and this quantity by five. Now we have 15 here and we have 15 here. Two things you have to keep in mind. As soon as you multiply this by three, you have to multiply that by three, even though we are not interested in red part, but we have to do that. Since we multiply the bottom quantity here, we, 3 became 15, we multiply that by 5, we, multiply, we must multiply that by 5. Actually, we are interested. What, what am I thinking? We are interested. It's very important that you do that. Because that's what they're looking for at the end. They're looking for the ratio of red to green. That's it. We are done. Red to green, 21 to 25. 21 to 25. Red to green is ratio is 21 to 25. Voila. So that was a non-traditional approach. As you can see, it can be done in a few seconds. Instead of doing all this mumbo jumbo the traditional way. Let's do the very last one, shall we? This is the very last one. And we'll call it a day then. Instead of doing 10 problems, we're going to do 5. I'm looking for my cat. Again, do it yourself as soon as I set it up. It says the ratio of, this is 25, ratio of. 1 to 7, 1 7 to 1 4 is same ratio as 20 to what? One more time. 20 to what? Here are the answer choices. A, B, C, D, and E. 4, 7, 16, 28, and 35. That is what it says. It says that the ratio of 1 7 ratio of 1 7 to 1 quarter is same as ratio of 20, 20 to 1. In other words, instead of a 7, instead of a 1 7, if we had a 20, what do we need to put here to make to make sure that the ratios the ratio does not change? It stays the same ratio. Let's do it together, shall we? Let's do it together. So the ratio we have is 1 7 to 1 4 1 7 to 1 4 Since we multiply one fraction by another fraction, what we have to do is 1 7 times 4, 4 over 1. 4 over 1. 4 over 1. And that, of course, when, you, when we keep on carrying it, 1 times 4 is going to give us 4. And the bottom, we're going to end up with 7. So that's 4 7. That's not enough. We don't want 4 on the top. We are told this ratio that we see here, 1 7, is same, 1 7 to 1 4 is same as 20 to what? We want 20 on the top. Well, that's very simple. If you want 20 on the top, multiply top and bottom by 5 and you're done. Now we have 4 times 5 is 20. And if you have 20 on the top and the bottom, we must have 35. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.